What you've been doing all summer? Photoshop has been making some significant changes. Specifically, there are 10 new features that you will want to know about. In this video, I'll discuss the first five features in the order they were released, and I'll rate each one of them out of five stars. Oh, and be sure to watch till the end because feature number five is a stunner. Our first new feature is more convenient gradients introduced in version 26.1 back in November of 2024. And so the idea has been that in order to edit a dynamic gradient, you've had to mess around with a bunch of dialog boxes. So I double click here and then I click here to enter a nested dialog box. And then I double click on this guy to finally get to the color picker and so forth. So it gets very cumbersome very quickly. Whereas now I can just bring up the contextual taskbar if I want more options still. I'd bring up the properties panel like so. I can click in order to add a new color stop, double click on it to directly enter the color picker, click here in order to lift a shade of blue, change that shade of blue, click OK, and just like that, I've modified the gradient. But all is not perfect. First, we have a bug. And so for years now, you've been able to duplicate a color stop by alt or option dragging it. That gives you a black color stop now, which is not what I want. And so if you want to duplicate color stops, you have to enter those nested dialog boxes as in the past and alt or option drag the color stops as you've done in previous versions of the software, which works fine. We next have a kind of error of omission. I'll change this preset right here to one I've created in advance and so notice I have a bunch of blue stripes and now I'm gonna switch the style directly here inside the properties panel to angle gradient that's great however let's say I want to move the center to the center of the image in that case I need to double click once again to enter the gradient fill dialog box and then drag it it'd be great however if I did not have to mess with the dialog box at all and then finally we just have a problem Adobe seems very proud of the fact that they introduced a method of stripes. This is in the previous version of the software, so it's not new. And that gives you a stripe for every single one of the color stops. The problem is that each one of these stripes is jagged. We do not have smooth transitions no matter what. And so Adobe, what we need, of course, is anti-aliasing. My take on this feature is it's all very well and good, but it's imperfect. So I'm just giving it three stripes stars and in case you're finding this to be terribly helpful then won't you take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications your gradients will thank you now for the frame tool which allows you to crop images directly on the canvas long story short it was first introduced in 2019 but it was marred by serious design flaws that rendered it the worst debut of any tool in the software. Now, finally, six years later, we have some welcome if imperfect updates. And so I'll go ahead and grab the frame tool. Notice we now have five shape settings. Polygons include stars, by the way, and we have custom path outlines. I'm gonna stick with the rectangle and I'm gonna add some round corners. And now I'll go ahead and draw a frame. Now at this point, let's say I'm thinking, gosh, those corners are not round enough. I do not have any on canvas controls. So I'll just go ahead and change this value to 200 pixels, only it's not dynamic and nothing is. Where frames are concerned, you can't change the number of sides associated with a polygon. You can't change so much as the location of a single anchor point in a custom path outline, thereby greatly diminishing the utility of that feature. Instead, you have to get everything established up front and then draw the frame and now notice that I have rounder corners now at this point the experience gets better you can click import image there in a the contextual taskbar I'll grab this fish that I shot at depth using an iPhone and you can see I'm dragging it around so it's being cropped on the fly I can even scale the fish if I'm so inclined I'll double click on it so I gain access to these controls which allow me to center the fish in the frame or I could fit the fish to the frame like so. Now at this point, let's say I have a very small ask. All I wanna do is add a drop shadow and notice that these settings are not subtle. 100% for opacity, big distance and size values. Click okay, I'm not seeing a darn thing even though the drop shadow is applied as you can see right here. And that's because unlike any other feature in the software, frames crop 
everything outside of them, including layer effects, which is bonkers. And so I'll right click on this guy and choose delete frame and notice we do indeed have a drop shadow. And so if frames are not the solution, which they currently are not, what are? Well, it's a more than 20 year old feature you can select any of the shape tools, doesn't matter which one, they're all dynamic. I'm gonna go with rectangle and I'll just draw a frame like so. Now, here's the secret handshake, you cut and then you paste. And that way you get a vector based mask, at which point I will go ahead and add a stroke just so we can better see what we're doing. And now notice that I have corner widgets. And so I have dynamic control as I do with any vector-based shape outline. So returning to the frame tool, were I to assign a star rating, I think I'd be very generous indeed to give this one two stars. Good news, things get much better from here, starting with the first of three features that were introduced in version 26.6 .6 back in April of 2025, and that is Select People, which not only allows you to select individual people automatically inside an image, but you can select their attributes as well, as we're about to see. And so here we've got a stock photo from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. And notice if I were to switch to the object selection tool, then we've got the select people item right here. You've got to give it a moment to update, but once it does, you can click on it and you can see icons for each of the people. If there's more than three as things stand right now, we've got six in all. Then you've got to click on that plus button right there to see them all. And then you can just hover over a person, such as person number three in the bottom left corner right there to see a magenta overlay. But to make things a little more clear, I've gone ahead and masked each one of these people according to Photoshop specifications. So there's person number one. And what I'm really impressed by where this one's concerned is the negative space where the hair details from person number four, it turns out, is concerned, even though this guy has person number six's hand. However, you know, it's amazing this can be done. And there's person number two followed by three. We saw her before four. We'll examine her in more detail in a moment. Five, and then finally six, and person number six not only has this wonderful negative hair detail, but also person number one's fist right there. In any event, they boil down like so. So, it's, you know, it's, everybody looks pretty good except for person number one as person number six's hand, person number six as person number one's hand. And then we have some missing details such as the back of person number four's hair and this bit of person number five's arm and so forth, by the way. However, hey, real quick, remember how I said there's a total of 10 new features? I'm discussing the first five now, you know that. I'll show you the next five features next week or if you just can't wait, join my Patreon to experience all 10 new features right this second. That's patreon.com slash now. And now back to the new features in the summer release of Photoshop 2025. Notice, I'll go ahead and switch back to that object selection tool and then click on select people, click on this guy, and then click on her, the woman who looks like she might be holding the camera. And notice that we have all of these attributes right here, which are gonna change depending on the person. So there's many more attributes that are possible than the ones we are seeing now. And so I'll click on facial skin right there and that just gets the skin on her face. But I also want her nose, of course, I'll click there on nose and I want her ear that's, that's on the right side of her head where we're concerned. So I'll click on ears and then I'll click apply and that goes ahead and selects all those attributes. Now I'll turn that into a mask and just to see how well it fares, I'll zoom on in and it's by no means perfect, but it's absolutely amazing that it can be done at all, which is why in terms of a star rating, I am giving this guy almost a perfect rating of four and a half stars. Next, also from April, we have adjust colors, which allows you to selectively modify the colors inside an image. You have only to click adjust colors here in the contextual taskbar to automatically add a hue saturation adjustment layer along with the conventional hue saturation and lightness sliders. What's new are the six color swatches, which at least theoretically represent the most common colors inside this particular image. Now, it's not always obvious where the colors reside, 
So I'll go ahead and click on this first red right here. Notice I get a pop-up panel, which is very handy. And I can change the hue value, which at least shows you what you're playing with. Because after all, hue is your most radical modifier. And then I might take the saturation down a little bit, even darken the lightness value, as we can see. But I really want to affect the wood background. I want to make it blue, so I'll select this next swatch over, which is another shade of red, apparently. And so I'll take the hue value all the way up to plus 180, increase the saturation and lightness values as well. Notice that we're seeing a before after view here inside the swatch before his top left, after his bottom right. I'll select this brown swatch next and I will take up the hue value a little more so that the background is indeed bluish. And I'll crank up the saturation ever so slightly, bring up the lightness value. Now you can overwrite a color if you want to. For example, I don't really have any use for this kind of mustard yellow right here. However, there are some reds in the original image. Notice this region of reds right here. It has been changed to green, as we can see. However, if I select the eyedropper, then I can click and drag around and I'm seeing the original color, which is this very vivid shade of red and now I can click on it notice I've overrid that color and I will change the hue value I'll take it down let's say a little bit and I'll take down the saturation values and maybe I'll darken up those particular colors now because I'm working with an adjustment layer I can turn it off and then back on. I can affect all the layers below. It does that automatically. And so if I just want to affect the wood, I would drag this layer down to below the color palette. So you can see that I'm affecting the wood like so, and I'm not affecting the colors in the palette at all. If I only want to affect the palette, then I drag this guy back up and alter option click on the horizontal boundary between the two layers like so. That way I'm clipping the adjustment to the color palette and I'm not affecting the wood background. However, I want it to affect everything because I really want the star ratings to stand out. Speaking of which, I do like this feature. I just don't think it's gonna set the world on fire, which is why I'm giving it a middle of the road three stars. The third feature that was introduced back in April is composition reference, which allows you to guide the composition of a generative image. And so I'm going to start with this blank document and I'll click on this bottom icon here at the bottom of the toolbox that is and I'll paste in a prompt very basic two hands holding a glass heart rising out of the clouds not going to apply any stylistic stuff I'll just click generate notice that it's telling us that it's generating with Firefly image model 3 that's not the best news on earth as things stand right now Firefly is at image model four so this is not the most recent option and yet it works okay i suppose it's a little uninspired that's the first variation here's the second one and here's the third one in this case we had the proper number of fingers in this case we've we've got a big finger mess both over here in the left and right hands and so what i want to do is guide this thing so it gives us better results and something that's a little more interesting as well which is why i created this sketch i just scribbled it on my ipad by the way it took me maybe 10 minutes that's really all you need you just need to give it some guidance and so i'll go and switch back to this thing and click on this icon here in the contextual taskbar now, we don't want a style reference because then we'd get a line drawing. We want a composition reference. So I'll choose the image and I'll double click on that ping file right there and I'll go ahead and leave the strength cranked up to its maximum. You can experiment with that one if you like and I'll go ahead and let her rip. And a moment later, we end up with these, I think, much better results. I don't know what's going on down here at the bottom of the heart, but the fingers are in great shape, much better than they were before and they're pretty homogeneous from one variation to the next and gotta say I really like that one a lot I think it compares especially favorably to this lame version right here and so while I'm really tempted to give this five stars because it is so terribly useful 
It doesn't employ the most recent version of Firefly, and it's not compatible as it just so happens with Jenner DeFill, which is why I'm going to give it what I consider to be a very healthy four stars instead. So what do you think? That composition reference is sweet, right? Maybe I should have given it another star. What do you think? What's your favorite? Comment below. And be sure to watch out for the remaining five new features next week. Or to see all 10 features right now, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.